Hello everyone, welcome to Akibit AI Podcast. We are bringing you a new set of topics and you'll see a lot of focus on agentic AI starting this year. So as you probably know, ServiceNow is very deep into the three pillars that comes to Workflow Data Fabric that combines all the data from different uh, disparate sources, all your infrastructure and other data sources. Then we combine it into creating action with AI agents and then creating assisted and autonomous workflow. So as ServiceNow unravels this whole uh, space, we'll be bringing you with new topics around this. Today, I have an expert in observability and Danica Shea joins us from San Francisco. Hi, Danica. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, good. So this is going to be one of the first topics in this space or first episode we're going to talk about. We're going to zoom into the observability world and what does the AI agents mean for that? So with that, before we actually dive in, Danica, why don't you quickly introduce yourself? Hi. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I am Danica. I am a product director in the AI Ops team, and I lead a bunch of initiatives within AI Ops. One of them is building AI agents. That's awesome. Yes. I. That's a great plug, actually. This observability is a part of a broader AI Ops uh, solution as well. So both AI Ops and observability go hand in hand. So we're going to get into both of those things a little bit more today and a lot more in the near future. So as we dive in, Danica, why don't you start with actually telling your perspective or what you think when you think of agentic, when you think of AI agents, what comes to you, what your mind when you think about this space? I think for me, it's mostly like from a pragmatic sense, it's the access to information. So AI agents make access to information, access to complicated information much easier for any persona, right? I think with the rise of AI and LLMs, what the most powerful things about them is that you don't really need to be taking a class or taking a course or being in that data storage system to be able to get this information and understand it. The AI agent with the right access and with the right powers can get that for you and then also summarize it in a way that makes the most sense because it can understand how to explain it to different types of personas. So I think that's to me, one of the most powerful, but also pragmatic ways to use AI. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I mean, and of course, it makes, if you look at our customer landscape, it makes a lot of sense because a lot of our customers come from you know, this operations or service desk environment, right? So they have different L1, L2, L3 types of responsibilities. And depending on their level they will be dealing with information, as you said, in a very different way or different or different complexities of information is getting to them. So AI agents can help them decipher them or simplify them for you, for them. Okay, that's great. So let's get into a little bit of the world that we live in, and that is IT operations. And tell us a little bit about how do how does these um, agentic AI or AI agents uh, will help specifically enhance this IT operations role? Yeah, of course. So the AI agents that I'm building within ITOM are AI agents that collaborate autonomously with third-party AI agents from best-of-breed observability platforms. And so the problem that we're trying to solve is that when an IT operator is trying to triage and investigate an alert, they really need to understand very quickly what is the impact and severity of this alert and how, which teams and subject matter experts can they pull in to start the investigation. And the complexity is that the critical information to answer these two questions resides in information silos. It resides within ServiceNow, but it also most elusively, it resides in third-party observability tools. And to make the problem worse, these IT operators, they don't often have access to these tools. And when they do, the learning curve for these tools is very high, right? They're not built for IT operators with more limited technical knowledge. And so with AI agents, you can sort of like break the barrier of access, first of all, because these AI agents can automatically contact a lot of these best of breed tools, and they can also simplify the information and present it in a way that's very operator friendly. And so with with access to the information, understanding, and context of the information, they can very quickly understand impact and severity, 
as well as get enough like nuggets of knowledge to start the um, investigation with the subject matter experts. Yeah, so I mean, this is great because a lot of times when we talking to customers, they just don't have one, two, or three tools. They got sometimes half a dozen, or even sometimes a dozen tools, right? And in open source environment, when you're monitoring your apps, your microservices, you you probably have open source tools. So it just helps them, right? Because it becomes almost a manager of managers kind of approach for a lot of yeah. our customers. And that's what ITOM does today. We embrace like an open system, open ecosystem of um, observability and monitoring vendors. We already connect with them via event management. They can now set, they can send events and alerts into ITOM. And from there, that's sort of the entry point for the IT operator. And our agentic approach is exactly the same, right? In the world of AI agents, we want to be the manager of manager of AI agents. We want to be the agent of agents. And we want to help want to help the IT operator connect to all of these vendors and to be able to like sort of facilitate a collaboration amongst AI agents. And it doesn't really matter how the other agents, like other third party agents are built, right? I mean, they could be using their own LLMs, or they could be using their own data structures. What matters is the data that comes to service now. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And I think also to add on to that. The information that they provide is very harmonious with the information that we already have. So we can take the information that they have based off of like traces, logs, and metrics and combine that harmoniously with the information that we have within the CMDB and sort of like the workflows and postmortems and like previous incidents and alerts. And we can marry that together and give the operator sort of like the best suggestion on what the next step should be. Yeah, and also this brings up a good topic. You mentioned CMDB. So CMDB is a great way for becoming a, providing a system of record for a lot of enterprises today. But even if you don't have a great CMDB today, or you're still in the process of building a quality CMDB, this approach can still work, right? I mean, they don't have to be bound down to say that, you know, I need to get my CMDB in like 70% ready state. Exactly. It's pretty much decoupled. Yeah. And I think... I. I'd mentioned this very briefly in the beginning, that whole data strategy the service now has around workflow data fabric and the RapidDB, which is kind of pretty advanced way of processing the data. That also helps because, you know, we, we are not bound to a specific data structure or a specific format. It could be Opal table formats. It could be done in a, any way that we can ingest that information into, into service now. So then we also call it a knowledge graph, which is, kind of another way of thinking about how the relationships are built. So that's great. Let's let's go a little bit into, do you want to give us specific scenario? Do you, you, know, you are working right now in the middle of this uh, huge development, and we will see that uh, development being released uh, in the coming months. But if you take a specific use case, do you want to walk down a specific use case with what you're building with some of the other agents? Yeah. And so, yeah, and I think it always helps to anchor around a very concrete use case. And so the one that, you know, we see a lot when we work with a lot of e-commerce companies, enterprise companies, is that, for for example, the alert that comes into ITOM will first be, say, on a application service called the payment service. And so it's the operator's job to sort of understand when they see this alert for the payment service, say it's like the SLA for availability is breached, right? Normally it should be 95%. It's now 94%. And so the operator really in a world without AI agents, they need to figure out what's the impact and severity of this alert and who to pull in to start the investigation. And so with AI agents, now the operator can open now assist and automatically we can detect that, okay, this alert is from a vendor XYZ. And given we have an integration with them, our AI agents will just autonomy, autonomously reach out to their AI agents to say, hey, can you tell us more about this alert? What other entities are you seeing being impacted? Do you have supporting metrics to sort of like support that claim? Do you see any things that have might have caused that change? Recent deploys, configuration changes. And this is all information that we can get in real time to help this operator figure out, is this worth, you know, can I snooze or do I really need to like go deeper into this investigation for the payment service? Yeah, I think that's a great use case because that that comes up a lot, right? In our customers who are doing uh, real-time transactions 
and they need to make sure that you know there's no anomalies uh, or, or they can stay ahead of a little bit of anomalies that's coming up it's a lot of rich data that's out there so but also uh, talk a little bit about and this goes back to more of an ai ops kind of workflow too right once we get all this rich data we're able to triage it we're able to present it to a customer in a more um, now this could be an element of autonomous aspect versus assisted aspect can you talk a little bit about where does autonomous part of ai agents could come in versus assisted yeah i think we want to give that control to the customers themselves so you can see this in sort of like different layers of autonomy The first layer, maybe the most conservative, is that the AI agent is just presenting a recommendation. So it's not really acting on it, but it's giving the operator enough information to say, hey, this is what, this is my guidance, kind of take it or leave it. But as we get more complex and integrated with actions that the agents can take on behalf of the user, the user can also, in their configuration, set it to something less conservative. So not only is the AI agent telling them what is the rationale for next steps, it's also implementing those next steps. And you you can see the most liberal would be it's acting on your behalf and it's just giving you a conclusion of what it did in the last sort of day or two. And so with the first release, we definitely want to tread carefully. We know AI agents are new, people are cautious, there's fears of hallucination. We really just want to summarize and give them the rationale for what is the conclusion that has been made. Um, And then as we launch more, more and more AI agents, we feel a lot more comfortable in H2 or 2026, we can sort of ladder up that those capabilities. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So as we get towards the end of this podcast, how our customers can keep up to date and even if they want to get involved in this new developments, what can they do? Yeah, I would say that we are, you know, um, we have blogs, we have updates from the no, sort of normal ServiceNow channel as we're rolling out more and more uh, AI agents across all the BUs, not just AI Ops and ITOM. And definitely, if you are interested in being a design partner, we would love to work with you to sort of figure out what is your use case and how we can build AI agents to solve um, your problem, uh, your problems, reduce MTTR on your behalf. Awesome. There was, was just a kind of very snippet small snippet of what we're working on and we're going to bring you more of these kind of episodes that you can get up to speed on also you can go to servicenow.com our main page is loaded with not a lot of new use cases that we are working on it'll get you uh, up to speed and danica thank you for being here today and we're going to get you back here soon when you have some agents out there working for our customers Uh, but yeah thanks a lot for being here thanks for everyone for listening in Until the next episode, bye for now. Thank you.